Whoa. Whoa. Where am I? Where where the hell am I? Jeez. I think I'm I think I'm a little lost. Beer, 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 beer. Hello everybody, welcome back to me, Mick Brewski, for another Ruski Brewski View. And today the beer I have for you is by Nickelbrook Brewing Company out of Burlington, Ontario. This is their Lost in Orbit Session IPA. Coming in at 4.5% alcohol by volume and an IBUs of... Let's find it here. 16. 16 IBUs. Are very, very low on the IBU scale, especially for a session IPA. So, let's crack this open in a minute. But looking at the bottle design, or can design, sorry, is a black can with stars. And you got a uh, astronaut's helmet, helmet, sorry, with Lost in Orbit. And you got some other uh, crazy space designs. You got a space rock in the background, pliers, planets. Looks to be, I have no idea, some sort of astronaut equipment, um, satellites, and a astronaut with a boom box up top there. Very, very cool. I really like this can design. Purple and black. Not too bad. So let's crack this open and see what we got. Pouring it into my Railway City Extra Large Popkin style glass is sort of where I'm landing on my name for it. Look at this beer, a little hazy. Just a little hazy. A little bit more than half in there. Oh, wow, yeah, that is um, super, super hazy. Very, very light, very, very pale yellow color. Nice white head on top. If you can see that, super, super hazy. I would say it's almost hazy crazy, as the Albano Rana would say. Very, very nice looking beer. Very light color, I guess pointing to the uh, lightness of the alcohol and the IBUs in this particular brew. But let's have a smell. I can already smell it right now. It smells great. Mmm. Piney, slight grapefruit, nice pineapple. A very slight resiny, almost dank smell off of here. Come, have it coming in at 4.5 and 16 IBUs. Wow, these are some smells that are usually found in very higher alcohol and higher IBUs, maybe even like IPAs, Imperial, Double and Triple IPAs. But this is very nice. A very nice resinous smell off this uh, particular session IPA. Let's have a sip. Hmm. Ooh. Hmm. Fruity, but almost herbally. Like an herbal tea, sort of bitterness flavor off of that. Yeah, of course, you get your pine, you get a little bit of grapefruit. You get some a very light resiny uh, hoppiness, dankness out of this beer. But I got a lot of tea flavors out of here, or at least very herbal um, <clears throat> flavors off of this. But with that said, we got to find out more about this. So, cheers, everybody. Let's keep on drinking. Mm hmm yeah like a uh, like an Earl Grey tea sort of flavor coming off uh, off of it when you smell it yeah I guess you get a little bit of tea smell a little bit of Earl Grey but very if if I got my teas right not the beer flavors but the teas flavors right I think it's a very Earl Grey sort of flavor profile Just slightly, right in the mid. Right in the mid, that's where it is. Because you get your your uh, your pine, your bitter grapefruit, your bitter hops, your resiny hops in the beginning. Moving into a semi-sweet, sort of, what I would say, Earl Grayish tea sort of flavor. And then ending off in a very nice, very, I guess, uh, citrus rind a bittery piney aftertaste which is quite enjoyable and everything flows really really well of course the earl gray tea what i'm at, i'm at least calling it because i don't know all my teas but it's a very memorable note is that it 
pops in right after that resiny, piney, grapefruity uh, beginning, and it sort of pops up, but it doesn't come out of nowhere. It, it the transition of flavors flows pretty damn well, and then again flows back into the uh, very resiny, piney sort of after lingering aftertaste. Uh, even though those aren't as intense as compared to, like I said, the high ABV IPAs, the doubles, to triple IPAs, definitely more more on a toned down note, but a very nice introduction to those flavors for people who are maybe not ready for those big, boozy, hoppy, double and triple IPAs. It's a very great introduction with those flavors. Uh, being like resiny pine and and and, and dank uh, dankness from the hops. I'm actually really enjoying this. It's like all those great flavors of those very intense beers on a much lower lower scale. About half that usually. Doubles and triples go from anywhere from I want to say eight to well with, with the the dankster king from Rouge River was eleven. So you're gonna get more of on like a cut in half sort of scale on the uh, alcohol content. Mouthfeel is great. Light to moderate heaviness in mouthfeel. Goes down like a dream. Smooth, semi-creamy almost in, in, in mouthfeel. I guess uh, like feeling. Makes sense. Mouthfeel equals feeling for sure. Um, but wow, yeah, I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of blown away, and if, if if I can say, without making too many puns, is that I'm a little lost uh, because this is it's kind of blow, blowing my mind away a little bit. A very very nice beer. Speaking of which, let's see what's on the can. So we have Nickelbrook Brewing Company's Lost in Orbit Session IPA. 4.5% alcohol by volume, 16 IBUs. And on the back, we do have a description, and it reads, Take another spin around the sun with our hazy session IPA. Inspired by the cloudy nebulas of deep space, Lost in Orbit <clears throat> shows off a juicy tangerine and guava hop flavors in a light, crushable body. Perfect for passing the time while drifting through the final frontier. A very nice description. Uh, tangerine, yes, I get that. Guava, mm, not so much. A little bit, but I do get that Earl Grey almost a sort of flavor profile, which is interesting for sure. Um, where do we start? There's down to a science, and then we have other information. So, well, let's start with the other information. Uh, you already know the ABV IBUs. Recommended serving glass is a nonic, uh, nonic pint. And then down to a science, or beer down to a science, sorry. And the brewer's elements are, for the malts, we have Pilsner, Golden Promise, Wheat, Flaked Oats. The hops are Amarillo, Citra, which makes sense, <clears throat> <clears throat> and Simcoe. The yeast is a Vermont ale, which also makes very much sense, seeing how hazy it is. Ingredients are water, barley, wheat, flaked oats, hops, and yeast. So you have a great amount of information right here on the can, which is tremendous. And on the bottom, on the bottom, we got a brood on date. J21. 18. J being, J being October. So this was brewed on October, or at least canned on October 21st, 2018. So just under a month old. And it is damn, damn delicious. I'm a very big fan about this beer. As you can see, it's very easy to drink because I'm almost on my final sip and we haven't even got to the website, which we're going to do right now. So, website is nickelbrook.com, and you go down to the Lost in Orbit, and it has the same description as on the can. Other than that, for information, nothing. Other than the ABV and IBUs, 
The majority of information about this beer is on the can where it should be, which I find amazing. Finally, moving over to Untapped. Untapped has given Lost in Orbit a 3.74 bottle caps out of 5, and that's out of just under 1,400 ratings. So, 3.74 seems like a solid review, but I may give it just a touch higher. So, cheers, everybody, on the final sip. Let's get right to ratings. Hmm. I like it in the sense that I get that Earl Grey, that Earl Grey tea out of the spirit, right in the middle of the flavor profile. Big fan of that. And it goes down great. It's a very approachable session IPA, which session IPA should be are very approachable, very easygoing. Then again, in the name, a sessionable. You can drink a lot of them because they are lower ABV, lower IBUs, but with all the same, I guess, flavor profiles of IPAs, pale ales, doubles and triple IPAs, all that great stuff, but in a much smaller, in a sense, smaller convenient package. So with that said, lost out of orbit. I'm not lost on this rating. It deserves a solid 9.5 out of 10 for me. And I'm gonna stick with that because this is a very unique session IPA. It's a very well done session IPA. And I just, I can't get over that Earl Grey flavor that I get. Even though I'm not a tea drinker and I don't really like Earl Grey, I like how I get that on my particular palate. I think that's amazing. As for presentation, you get a shit ton of information. ABVs, IBUs, descriptions, ingredients, all the malts, hops, and yeasts. Brewed on, best before date, right on the bottom. All it's really missing is food pairings, but shit. Great. Great information. You can pack a lot of information onto your can. For every other brewery out there that doesn't pack the same information on their can, was still a very, a very stellar, you know, can design. You can do it if you put your mind to it and you figure out where everything goes in the right place. You can definitely do it. So, other than food pairings because it's not even listed on the website. And the website's la lacking a little bit of information. Um, presentation gets also a solid nine. Actually, gets, yeah, it's not the same, but it gets a solid nine out of 10 for me. With all that said, guys, if you have any comments, questions, or beers you want to review in the future, you can leave all the information down in the comment box below. If you want to go ahead and like this video or subscribe to me, Mayproski, it would be greatly appreciated as well. With all that said, that's going to do it for me, Mate Bruski, and like I always say, crack a beer and enjoy. Cheers.